Okay, just sitting down here with my IQ Air machine that uh, basically died a few weeks back. It started making really bad grounding, grinding sounds like all motors eventually do. And it seized up, so it's finished. I got 10 years use out of it, um, which I guess is fair. Um, but I still got some filters that I got some life in it, so I figured out a way that I can still use them. So I took the thing apart. Here it is. Here's the top piece. This just goes inside, plunks on top of here. Take the lid off. Here is the main filter where the air was coming up. <clears throat> Take this off. And to get at the motor, I had to take this piece off. It had some weird type screws in here that are non-standard. I just drilled them out so I could remove this piece. I'm not using it. To get at the motor, there was this piece here with some rubber insulators. I just took a hacksaw and cut it off because I'm not using it. So I could get at the motor. And I'm maintaining the seal, the uh, styrofoam. Don't want to damage it. And I pulled the motor out and I cut off all the wiring. I cut out all the electronics that were on the bottom. Don't need that anymore. All I'm after is the housing. Here is the original IQ Air motor. Sentry Fugal fan, I think it's called. It just sat in there, but you can see. I put it here and I'll try to spin it. Doesn't want to spin, see? Sees the contrast. <clears throat> My fan here. And this is a very old fan also, just as old as that one. It's been no problem. So it's seized up. Basically, this is garbage. Throwing that out. Not into fixing motors like that. So we're going to put this together. But we're going to have to make some changes to make it go together. So the original design was pushing the air through this filter, which, like I said, was good because it gets rid of the uh, potential particles by the motor. But... The way we're going to do it, we're going to be pulling the air through the two filters at the same time. So we're going to leave the bottom assembly intact, the way it always was. It just sits in there. And now, instead of the, uh, the fan assembly being in the center, we're going to put the uh, HEPA filter in the center. Well, this is normally was on the top like this, but now it's going to sit right on top and pull the air through both. And it fits on nicely, but... I found, I need another hand here, for my experiment, I need to turn it over. And before I do that, I have to reverse the direction of this filter, because I'm pulling air through, and this was the good side, so I want to make sure the, um, the bad side is flipped over, or we're going to get all the dirty air coming back at me. So you see I'm flipping it over, and... It still fits in there pretty nicely, pretty snugly, no problem. So once I have this filter turned over, then I'm going to take this assembly and it is going to, it's going to be flipped over from the original way it was, like this, leaving us a nice hole, which right away when I seen that, I seen potential for this to work. Now, then we're going to put it on top, like so. Look at back here, you have a look at it. Fits on almost like it was made. These things are nice, nice and snug, they fit on good. Leaving me with a nice hole on the top. Look at that, lots of space to suck air in. And it looks like this fan will fit very nicely. I do have a smaller fan which uh, would fit r excellent in there, but this fan's bigger and it's the one I'm going to be using. I don't really care how the machine looks. This is actually more powerful, but uh, anyway, we just uh, have the air sucking from the bottom and we stick it in the hole. Very simple. Doesn't fit that great. We could uh, duct tape that up uh, pretty easy. The smaller fan would fit in nicely, but this is kind of in the way, so we have a reducer here. I have everything that I need always. These are cheap. You can get these online for like 10 bucks. This is 6 inch to whatever size you want. And lo and behold, we'll stick it in. And you can see that it fits pretty good. 
it would just take one thing of electric tape or like duct tape. There's not much of an edge there and just to wrap it around here to seal that up so we can pull the air from the bottom. That'll make my fan fit on very nicely. When that's all taped up, that'll be nice and secure. Some duct tape around here and it should seal good. The, the seal was preserved in the original filter and there you have it. This is the uh, modified IQ Air, my own fan. And I'm willing to bet that this fan will outperform the uh, fan that they put in. These fans I've had for years and they just last forever. And then if this fan ever breaks, I can easily replace it. But there we go, the modification of the IQ Air. We're gonna uh, tape that up and get this thing going. And I think we're gonna remove these arms. I don't see a need for them at all. Um, there's just no need for it. I thought about making a hole and putting this thing on somehow, but that's kind of uh, um, pointless. And I've always thought that was a design flaw of the IQ Air, how they had the motor blowing air up at a 90 degree angle like that and deflecting the air. So what happens when air meets 90 degrees, especially when there's all these plastic ridges, it adds a lot of resistance to it. I know IQ Air did that to make the unit look more aesthetically pleasing. They don't want a big hole, but they really should have had uh, the air coming up and air, air vents coming out the top and not trying to push it out sideways. That's just one comment. Also, this thing was in there on top of their fan. See how flat that is? That was blocking a lot of the air too. It was causing unnecessary air resistance. This way, there is no air resistance from anything like this or this because it's just directly pulling in from that filter. So I think that this way is actually going to be an improved method and I can adjust the, uh, the, uh, the speed of the fan with this speed adjustment. And uh, this fan uses a lot less energy. I think these fans are around 80, 80 watts or so. And I believe this IQ Air is pulling 200 and 15 watts on high power which is a lot so this is going to be more energy efficient and I'm sure this fan will pull just as much air as that does but this is the uh, modified IQ air it doesn't look too pretty but again I really don't care um, as long as it cleans the air that's it's not an ornament I got other ornaments you know over there and like to look nice but this is to clean the air that's all I care about but it's got to get it taped up. And I, I have the original casters for the IQ Air, so I can put them back on. But I'm probably just going to prop it back up on my stand up there. Like so. And that will give me some more life out of the filters. Now if I want, I can keep buying IQ Air filters and use it with this machine. Um, once these filters wear out, I don't think there's any point in it. Because they're very, very expensive. Uh, especially when I can just easily attach my fan onto, like what I've done here, any round HEPA filter with the bottom on it is so easy to just do. And this is a certified HEPA filter made by Bateman Technologies, which I'm sure is just as efficient as the IQ Air one. But anyway, there you have it, the modified IQ Air. And I guarantee you this fan is going to last longer than that one. But there's, if there's a will, there's a way. But this will allow me to use up my old filters. And, uh, you know, it's a square it's a square down here. <clears throat> so that leaves me with a lot of options to put whatever filters I want if I wanted to. But we'll use up these filters and then uh, and we'll see what we want to do with this after. But we're going to throw the electronics out. And we're going to throw that fan out. See, that's what you're paying for in this machine. There's not a lot to it when you take a look at it. This thing retails for about $900 Canadian plus taxes and shipping and it's mostly just plastic and there's that motor. You can get these fans, inline fans for anywhere between $150 to $300. Um, I would recommend using you know, any fan that's 100 and, 120 CFM all the way up to 300 in that range should be uh, good but very simple to do and we're going to get it all taped up here and get it running and we'll add to the video 
Okay, here's the main HEPA filter. Here was the good side. Here's the bad side. Sorry for chewing on a candy here, but <clears throat> here we go. This is a brand name IQ Air filter. Sticking it in. Just reversing it like so. And so the bad side is down, not the dirty side. Stick it on top, like so. There, it fits in nice. There we go, that's down. Take this little piece here. It's gonna go on top. So it's nice and we could use a little bead of tape around this just to make sure it's 100% sealed. There's our hole. And I'm gonna tape in this reducer right now with some duct tape and I'll come back in a second. Okay, we got it all uh, nicely taped up here. I just used painter's tape, it's good enough. I made sure I got it right underneath so it's sealed 100% right around. I removed these uh, panels, I just broke them off and I'm gonna take this one off right now. It shouldn't be hard. Bang, there we go. Don't need these parts anymore. Don't need their electronics. And I'll just cut the rest of this cord out in a second. I don't need any other cords. And there it is, it's put together. We're gonna to put it on the stand now and uh, plug it in for the first time. All right, here we go. This is my modified uh, IQ Air machine. It looks different with my great big fan and we're going to turn it on for the first time and pull the air through the two filters. And I have it hooked up to a remote control. All my air cleaners are hooked up to these, uh, this remote control here. See that? And I can control them remotely. There we go. It's on. Turn it full power. Starting up. A lot of air, I'll smell it. It's all right. Here's the air intake. You can feel, yeah, it's pulling quite a bit of air. There you have it, the modified IQ air with my fan. This is probably moving about the same amount of air as it did before. If there's a will, there's a way. You can always modify things, but this will let me use up my uh, IQ air filters uh, until they're completely done. After that, I probably won't buy no more IQ air filters for this thing because there's just no point because they're very expensive when I can just go buy a round filter like this and just slap it on like that and this filter is a certified filter just as good as the IQ air machine this is actually quieter than the original IQ air machine was and I can turn the uh, speed up and down with my ceiling fan control that I installed but it is harder on the fan when you reduce it though or I could even shut it off with this controller like so. Best to run the fan on near higher power. It stresses it when you uh, go too low. Crank it up to full power. And this fan's rated at 309 CFM. You can use any inline fan. I've used other fans uh, by can fan, which were okay. Um, yeah, this works great. You can use any size fan. A smaller one would work too. Uh, like anywhere from 120 CFM, 4 inch fan, all the way up to this one. I wouldn't use a bigger fan than this. 
because you don't want to start pulling too much air from those filters, but moving a lot of air, sucking a lot of air in the bottom, and then I can turn my uh, Honeywell one on to pr keep pre-filtering this if I want. But there you have it, the IQ Air Modified. Let me know what you think. I know it doesn't look too pretty. Um, like I said, I could get a smaller fan and try and get cut a hole in this and get this one in here, but there's no point. I think that was a bad design on the original IQ Air, blowing air at a 90 degrees and deflecting it like this. How much harder that fan has to work. Air doesn't like to be forced 90 degrees. Much more efficient if it comes straight out like this. Right from the bottom. There you have it, the modified IQ Air, back in action.